So we had a question about uh, print and play cards. We've done a lot of videos on print and play cards. We had a question about the um, what happens if your printer offsets the different sides of the card so that the front and the back don't line up exactly. Well, here's what you can do. What you can do is first try to print out the front and print out the back separately, okay? And you place them in the orientation that you would glue them together, like this. Then we hold them up to a light source to see how they line up, to see whether or not they line up properly. Now here, uh, this prototype for rock, paper, scissors, dynamite uh, seems to line up perfectly well, especially since I made the backs very forgiving. Now, if that were not the case, what you could do is you can, using the light source, shift it over so that, shift it over so that they align and then use scotch tape to make your scotch tape hinges before using the spray glue. Now, if you intend to actually uh, print them front and back, then you have a couple of options. If you're the one making the print and play file, then adjust your margins so that everything is shifted over by the exact amount. You print it out front and back, and then you measure how much the offset is holding it up to a light source. And then you can see, well, I need to offset by X amount. Now, here's a strategy you can try. It's a bit daring because it involves you actually doing stuff to the exposed surfaces of the cards. What I've done here is I've traced uh, the cutting edge of the back of the cards and I've trimmed all the way up to the cutting edge of the front of the cards. Now I do not recommend doing this unless you have cards that you've already treated with clear coat. Uh, otherwise oh, you could end up ruining the fronts of, or the backs of the cards. You can end up tearing up the ink or tearing up the toner depending on how you print the cards out. If you arrange them thusly, you can create your tape hinge like so. Now, I don't like having tape on the inside glued portion. Every time we make a tape hinge, the uh, tape hinge is on a piece of the paper that's going to get cut off anyway. Uh, if we try to make a tape hinge on the inside, the tape remains inside, allowing the cards to possibly separate over time. Here, again, I don't recommend this unless you have uh, clear coat treated cards because look at this you can end up tearing off some of the toner or ink that you see here. But it is still foldable, so it's ripe for spraying. Now there are some extra tricks you can have up your sleeve if you are actually creating the files that your cards will be printed from. For instance, uh, if you have a problem with the printer lining up the cards, uh, you can uh, offset the margins uh, within the file so that you can account for however much the printer is going to offset the edges. So that way you can print it and then the fronts and the backs will meet up edge to edge. Now here, what we've done is we've printed out the fronts and backs on the same sheet, okay? If you intend 
To do that, here we have a vertical alignment, and this vertical alignment requires that one of them be inverted. You can fold along the cutting edge. And if you're going to use some sort of paper core inside, you can slip that in uh, after you glue it. And then just press down, glue, and then you have front and back sized cards. If you have a horizontal alignment, what you can do is you can print them side by side. You don't have to worry about inverting any images. You spray with glue, although I recommend making the crease before you spray with glue. And then all you have to do is just fold it over and you have your front. That's kind of a sloppy rush job there, but you get the idea. There we go. Then we would spray with glue, fold it over, and you have two-sided cards. And lastly, something that you can do if you are the one who is creating the file, um, what I like to do, this is especially true when I need to create a uh, card back for a print and play game that does not have card backs, I make sure that the backs of the cards are very forgiving. And I put all the cutting edges on the front of the cards. So that way, if the, if the offset is only a millimeter or two, you have all this extra space around the edge Okay, and I don't put any cut lines on the back. This was an exception just because it was a rush job. But um, all the cut lines are on the front, so if you cut along those lines, the back sides are totally blank around the edges with lots of white space to act as a buffer. So if it's offset by a millimeter or two, it really doesn't make that much of a difference and nobody really notices. So if you're interested in playtesting Rock, Paper, Scissors, Dynamite, we do have print and play files available at the Meeple Witch Cafe uh, website. We're going to have a link in the description. I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial, part five, and the series just seems to keep growing by popular request. So um, if you like this, please uh, like our videos, subscribe, keep coming back and viewing more. And of course, this has been Jason from Meeple Witch Cafe reminding you to dine in and game on.